Hello physical sciences learners, my name is Miss Martins, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be discussing, or I'm going to be introducing, vectors to you. So what is a vector, how can we define a vector, some examples of vectors, and how we can represent vectors. Graphical representation of vectors. So subscribe if you want to learn about vectors, Newton's laws, etc. in the future. In order to understand vectors, we need to understand scalars and the difference between vectors and scalars. So both are physical quantities, right? But what makes them different? A scalar is a physical quantity that has only magnitude. Now magnitude means size. So for example, if I tell you that I ran 300 meters, 300 is the magnitude. Meters is the unit. So when we speak about magnitude, it just means size. A magnitude of 500 is greater than a magnitude of 300, right? Fancy word, but it just means size. These are examples of scalars. Mass, distance, time, energy, and so on. Those are scalars. Vectors, on the other hand, are also physical quantities. They also have magnitude, but, and this is a big but, vectors need a direction. So for example, if I said I ran 300 meters to the east, I'm now giving you a vector, not a scalar. So vectors have direction. So what types of vectors do we know? Well, displacement is a vector. So distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector. Velocity is a vector. Speed is a scalar, okay? Acceleration is a vector. Force is a vector, and force is a vector we're going to be speaking about a lot. So we've got force. Force is a vector. Time. What was that? It's a scalar. What about distance? Now, don't get confused. Distance and displacement, they're different. Distance is a scalar. You don't need to give me a direction. But displacement is a vector. I do need a direction. We're going to be getting into this in a later video, and you should have learned this in grade 10. But displacement is the difference in position. So it's your final position minus your initial position. It's your difference in position. So if this is your initial position over here, this is my initial position. This is your final position. I know you walked all the way along the green path. That is effectively your distance. But your displacement is you started here, you ended here. That white line pointing down and to the right is your displacement. Now, how do we represent vectors? Vectors are represented by using an arrow. We've got a tail, which is this part, and we've got a head, which is this part over here. The magnitude is represented by the size of the arrow, and the direction is the direction in which the arrowhead points. So if I had to draw a vector next to it like this, we could say that the smaller vector has a smaller magnitude than the blue one because it's smaller but it's pointing in the same direction there are still different vectors here some vector notation so notation is just a fancy word of saying how we write something so for example if i'm speaking about force which we know is a vector which means it needs a direction i can use a little arrow on top to represent this notation is quite old we generally don't do this in the caps curriculum we can also break up our vectors into components. Now, this is a whole nother video, so remember to subscribe and stay tuned for that. But basically, if I have a vector that's going like this, that vector is going up and to the right. Up and to the right. Think about it. It's pointing up and to the right. I can break that up into a vector that's pointing to the right and a vector that's pointing up. That vector that's pointing to the right, I can call fx or f parallel. It's parallel. That vector that's pointing up, I can call fy, like along the y-axis, or f perpendicular. This one over here, the solid one, that would be the resultant vector, which is basically fx and fy added together. This is a whole video on its own, so don't stress out. Here's one last example. A is a vector that's going up and to the right, I can break that down or resolve into components. It's a fancy word. I can resolve it into its x component and its y component. Another word for its x component, you may say it's 
parallel components, it's generally parallel to the surface, and AY would be its perpendicular component that's generally relative to a surface, or we can say the horizontal component is the X component, because we know that the horizontal axis on a Cartesian plane is the horizontal one, and AY, or the Y component, is the vertical component. In the next video, we're going to be going over how to indicate the direction of a vector. So do we use the compass points? Do we use the x-axis? Do we use bearing? So subscribe and look out for that video.